hello you guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is courtney and in today's video we will be continuing with our goal setting series and this time we will be talking about backwards goals now if i sound a bit different than you have guessed it i am slowly losing my voice i feel like this happens every nine weeks like no joke but i went out this weekend with my family had a fun time was screaming my head off and now our voice is slowly withering away. I'ma try my best to push through this video, but please bear with me. I'ma just talk in a lower register so I'm not coughing or my voice doesn't sound too scratchy, but yes, I am slowly losing my voice. Please bear with me, <laughs> but let's get started. Now, just to recap my last YouTube video, we talked about vision board goals and vision board goals is very, <laughs> clearly stated a visual format to see your goals and aspirations and regularly seeing images and affirmations related to your goals can reinforce a positive mindset helping you stay motivated and optimistic to achieve them and for this video i did two goals one focusing on style and one focusing on self-care so backwards goal setting is very clearly kind of what the title is so you start by defining your end goal and then you work backwards to determine the specific steps needed to achieve it by starting with your desired outcome you can outline the necessary actions and milestones to reach that specific goal now funny enough i feel like i've kind of been doing a bit of backwards goal setting when it comes to my smart goals and also my vision board goals that i've showed you guys on this channel i've always listed some very broad spectrum goal like getting my rbt buying three pieces of clothes and then i kind of like break down the steps towards that whether it be my study techniques or whether it be searching up pictures specifically on like styles i like so i feel like a lot of the goals i've been showing you are backwards goals so this one isn't really probably going to feel as different or like super different than the ones you've seen already on this channel but one thing about backwards goals that i really do enjoy is just purely how um dang it i can't think but just how purely you really can work on your desired outcome it really forces you kind of to ruminate and just get as detailed as possible as a specific thing you want and i realize that sometimes we don't always know what we want like we have this general idea or this umbrella idea but we can't really give the details or specifics and that's what i really like about oh my god my voice is dying can y'all hear it <laughs> that's what we really that's what i really like about backwards um goal setting And for this video, I will be using a goal that I made back in 2023. And this was one that I really kind of saw the end goal. So I thought it'd be the perfect um, example. And the goal that I will be sharing, which is one of my real goals in real life, and it is to buy a house. So right now I'm just writing the end goal, which is like the last step, and it's to buy a home. And I think that's every young person's dream. I'm only 25. Um, I haven't really even thought about it since I kind of, since this goal and idea and this house came in my head. But I just want to show you guys how true I really am. This little red book is something that I've had for a few years now. And I used to write like affirmations in it or like daily thoughts. And I'm flipping through it now, but I had one day like randomly at night where I literally saw like visualize my dream house outside and inside and wrote every detail about it. Like it says September 24, because that was the original goal that I wanted to have this house. But then again, I didn't put no work towards it. I just kind of visualized it. And at first I thought I did the wrong date. But as you can see, I think I visualized this September of 2023 
randomly at night. I made a financial plan and then I literally wrote out my house of my first home. Like it just all hit me and it just flowed. And this is the detail that we need to get when it comes to backwards goal setting. Like when it's your end goal, you need to see your house use my house as an exi- as an analogy you need to see your house you need to see the outside is it a victorian style is it ranch style is it a duplex is it a barn farmhouse whatever it may be how many bedrooms how many bathrooms is it an open kitchen floor plan um is there room for an office is the fence is the backyard fenced in do you have a lot of land is it on an acre do you have a farm do you have cows do you have chickens And I know that might sound crazy, but yes, I really sat and thought about all of this when I was writing that house. Like there's pages in here. I kept it simple so I didn't fill up this whole page, but yes, I knew everything from like what my kitchen was gonna look like, my master bedroom, my guest bedroom, my bathrooms, and I made a vision board on Pinterest about it, but y'all, I literally visualized this house And this house is my end goal and I see it so clearly. And that's the most important step when it comes to backwards goal setting. Make up your mind, make the choices and have a clear visual outcome. Not visual, a clear final. I mean, I guess I guess visual, but just have a clear outcome that you can see. And to take it a little bit further, which kind of goes into the going downhill or going backwards for the goal plan I did search um just normal price homes in my state hence why you can see my phone out so I can get an estimate on how much a home like that would go for so I can be as accurate as I can for what to need like what to look out for and for the next step which I surprisingly forgot to record I don't think I've ever forgotten to record parts of my videos but I actually forgot to record this one I'm sorry but I just drew a little arrow going down or kind of down and right (laughs) and then I just wrote the specific ways I could buy a home so I did funny enough talk to like a loan mortgage person or a financial aid advisor when it comes to buying a home around the same time I had this vivid dream about my dream home so you can see my notes app section open because that's where I had the conversation with them and I was just writing stuff down so we were talking about um, the most common home loans you can get and the requirements for that so in order really to kind of secure a home unless you down outright just put cash money down you probably will need a home loan hence why i have um listed that as kind of the next step because typically when you secure a home loan it's really nice to be able or being able to secure your home is much easier that's what i've kind of gathered i need to of course do more research on it but that's kind of like the con- how the conversation went with me and the loan mortgage broker guy <laughs> i don't even know his specific um career but yeah so i worked on just the specific necessities needed for securing those two types of loans we talked about and then i moved into savings we talked about the idea of cash to closing closing costs when it comes to a home and how much typically is like 10% down, 20% down on the average type of home that I want to see. And I hope, I'm not sure if you guys can hear TV in the background. I'm at my family's home, so that's my little sister. So sorry if you can hear that. She's just watching some TV. She's chilling. But um, yeah, so my next step I talked about was savings because that's probably the most vital step and really is a key stepping stone to getting me on the other hump. <laughs> but yeah, savings is kind of like the middle step. So I talked about um, the closing costs on average, the price range, how long it typically could take for me to save that amount of money. And I think that's it currently. I didn't put how much I had in my savings because that's something a bit more private that I don't really want to share with y'all. I mean, I know we are open and we're a family here, but you know, some things are need to be kept private. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm just writing out all the stuff I need for my savings and then reminding myself that this is average and me specifically, it'll probably fall. I have a chance for it to fall like within that range or sometimes out of it. And then moving on to after savings, we work 
me and my broker loan mortgage guy (laughs) talked about what I could do specifically to cut costs, to build my savings, and to make sure that I'm on the right path. So we talked about like refinancing auto loans or making sure I'm getting good quality coverage um, for insurance, but not paying too much, making sure that I'm getting competitive wages at my jobs. (laughs) Well, I was working jobs, but now I just have one job, (laughs) but just making sure that I'm making decent money that I can truly budget my monthly bills and still be able to save and all that good stuff. And that's kind of the last step I'm going to be doing for this backwards goal setting video. All right, you guys, we have made it to the end of the video. Here is my completed backwards goal setting example. I will definitely go in to add more specifics about my budget and savings, but I'll do that off camera just to make it a little bit more personal for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and happy goal setting.